Hi guys, Brain here, and welcome to another commentary video. Today is the epic release of the Xenomorph. Good old the Alien chapter, both Ellen Ripley and the Xenomorph are coming to the game today. Just super exciting. By the time you're watching this video, you probably watched a lot of people buy and play as these characters. But I want to talk specifically about the, the perfect organism, good old the Alien itself, and how it translates to become one of the, probably the best killers in Dead by Daylight. Not from a strength perspective, obviously that's still like Nurse Blight and all that. But in terms of just like having a full and complete kit kind of does everything completely right and kind of doesn't really have any weak points it's not that the alien itself is particularly like shortcoming in any way it's just dwarfed by better killers that have better powers but in terms of its strength it kind of has no nothing really in the way of flaws so let's go ahead and talk about how the xenomorph is the perfect killer so the xenomorph is a perfect killer because its kit is split uh pretty perfectly between its two different uh, aspects of it, its two main abilities, and both of these abilities are quintessential to winning the game of Dead by Daylight and helps you circumvent kind of the harder aspects of RNG, such as maps, tile setups, a lot of the RNG that may uh, screw you over in terms of Dead by Daylight. Obviously, these two main abilities being the tunnel transport, you, the, the secret underground tunnels that remind you of the high from aliens, which allow you to move around the map at a super quick speed, although your positions at which you, you know, come out are fixed, and your tail swipe ability, which is your anti-chase ability. So essentially, the two main things you need to be good at Dead by Daylight are those things. You need map traversal and you need anti-chase, because these are the things that need to be universal in order for you to win any match of Dead by Daylight, because you never know, obviously if you go to Midwitch, go to a map like Midwitch, which is the most killer-sided map in the game, you may be able to get away with winning a lot because, you know, without necessarily running the best killer, because, well, Midwitch is the smallest map in the game and the loops are fairly weak. There are some rooms that just spawn entirely without loops. It's just room of desks. So you can run somebody like, like Myers or Clown or Pig and do fairly well in those maps because, well, the loops are not, there's not a lot of pallets. The loops are fairly weak. And obviously the indoor maps uh, favor killer often more than they favor survivor. Obviously a very, very small size map, but also you could end up going to something like Mother's Dwelling, the biggest map in the game, and has a lot of like really good tile setups and loops. The, obviously the main building of Mother's Dwelling still has that gone window, which is really obnoxious. So you could be sent to a map that it does not favor you in any way, shape or form. So having a ability to move around the map is very, very paramount. If you notice that most of the killers that are higher tier in the game, have some sort of movement ability. Nurse teleports, Blight just runs at him, Spirit phases, Wesker has his double dash ability. Artist doesn't have a movement ability, but she has the burns where she can affect people far away. Oni, great example, running, dashing around that. But most killers that are actually really, really good, like top 10 killers in the game, they have some sort of movement ability to help them, you know, pressure the whole map. And Xenomorph has that just built in and does not have to earn it in any way. The moment you spawn in, those little turret pads that you can enter to go into your tunnel, those are everywhere. Those are quite literally everywhere. Those are set up for you. It's not like Demogorgon where you have to take your time to actually set down the portals to have access to that part of your ability. They're just there from the start. You, If you run lethal on this character and you're going through the tunnel, whoo, whoo, that is easy value, easy value. You can be up on, on somebody in two seconds, absolutely two seconds. And this is something that you can take advantage of the entire time throughout the entire match. When I was uh, playing uh, them in the PTB, one of the things I really enjoyed was just how much bang for your buck you got while running info perks while playing this character. You're running Discord in, you're running barbecue, because all you have to do is just slip into your tunnel, and because you're running way, 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 way fast uh, inside your tunnel, uh, you can just like run to wherever that, that info proc is, which is really, really helpful. Like really, really helpful. It's really, really good. And it's just, it's just, it's just perfect. I don't know what else to say. It's like, literally, like, they gave what demo has to set up, <laughs> take time to set up, and just gave it to Xenomorph for free, which is, you know, keep that in mind, bookmark that in your head, gave another killer's power to this killer for free, because we'll cover that in the anti-chase section, too. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, it gave demo's power uh, to Xenomorph for free at the start of the match, uh, which is really extremely powerful, but gives you the ability to kind of be anywhere in the map, not only at the beginning, but throughout the match that you need to be at any given point, which is really, really wonderful. And it's not even like Freddy's uh, teleport ability where at some point, like certain turret areas get shut down. No, those are available to you like the entire match. It's not like Freddy where like, once the gens are done, you're just down part of your power. Like you can help defend the exit gates using this tunnel system as well. And it's just like really, really intuitive and really, really good design because map mobility is super important to 
consistency in Dead by Daylight, and you notice that a lot of the killers that don't have mo map mobility kind of suffer a lot as a direct result. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this second part of the Xenomorph's power, which is the Tail Swipe. The Tail Swipe being the uh, anti-chase tool that the that the Xenomorph has. It can go up and over windows, it can go up and over pallets, it can even over, go over low loops, uh, which is uh, very, very interesting. Uh, some people have found a way to manipulate it to where it can go over loops that the Xenomorph is actually shorter than, <laughs> which is very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Uh, and essentially to break down uh, what this this tail swipe essentially it is, it is essentially Nemesis's tier three M2. Obviously, m minus the, the, the pallet break ability, the, the tail swipe could not break pallets, and if it could, honestly, it would be extremely broken. And also, uh, it is slightly shorter in range. It's slightly shorter in range. I think it's by like half a meter, but I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head. I looked at them at one point, but I don't remember them off the top of my head, but I believe it's like half a meter or something like that than tier three. But either way, either way, even if we're only looking at like tier three Nemesis, Nemesis has to build the entire match the entire match to get to his tier three. Not the entire match, but you know, like he doesn't start with it. He has to build up to it. So if the survivors are split up, you're only infecting one dude, you could end up hitting tier three fairly late into the game. Uh, and you're kind of just like hoping for RNG that people are grouped up so you can get split infects and then you get your tier three fairly early. But the Xenomorph uh, gets this uh, ability right away. They just, they just have it, <laughs> which is pretty crazy, pretty gnarly. They can get knocked out of it, but by the uh, turrets, but the, the turrets are not very good. Like most, like even just in the PTB alone, a lot of Xenomorph, Xenomorph players have already figured out how to just like completely circumvent the turrets. Most of the time you can run up and just melee them before it knocks you out of your power, but you can also use your tail ability, which is a ranged ability that has extremely long range like we talked about, to hit said turrets and to keep them from blowing you up. Even then, even then, you can run add-ons that make that not even a thing. You can run add-ons that make the turrets, uh, essentially a lot of the Xenomorph's add-ons uh, their their whole deal is like nerfing the turrets, so you don't have to be good at taking down the turrets. You can just run the anti turret add-ons, and then suddenly those things are like near useless, and you can just put those down super easy. <laughs> so it's like there's really no like the downside for this is so minimal that it really doesn't matter. So you just have what is almost effectively Nemesis's tier three tentacle swipe as just a, a power out the gate, and you can keep it almost the entire game, uh, which is absolutely wild. Absolutely wild, and I, I don't think I need to explain to you the importance of anti-chase uh, as a as a, just an ability in Dead by Daylight. You notice that everybody, everybody who's above like halfway in the, anybody's tier list has some sort of anti-chase ability. Anti-chase is the name of the game in Dead by Daylight because map RNG can get really nasty, really nasty. We were talking earlier about how Midwitch is a kind of a very icky map because it can spawn literally a tile that has nothing in it room of just a bunch of school desks nothing for you to use but there's also really nasty stuff like garden of joy which can spawn the parking lot loop into a long wall jungle gym into a path pallet into another long wall jungle gym into shack like it's like some maps can spawn some really really ridiculous setups and if you're just uh, an m1 killer that does not have a fairly substantial m2 uh, anti-chase ability you're just kind of you're just kind of host you just kind of got to deal with that. You got to just force the pallets down, which wastes a lot of time. And then you got to kick those pallets, which deletes your bloodlust, which means it's going to be harder for you to catch up. So, but they have another loop right there. So they're already in the next loop. It's just a huge waste of time. But with the Xenomorph, you just hit them over that window that they're trying to abuse. You just hit them over that pallet they just tried to drop. You know, like you, you shut them down. You shut them down very, very quickly. And I, I don't know. It's just like literally they, I think they went out to make a, not a perfect killer, but a perfectly designed killer for the game, if that makes sense. They weren't trying to topple Nurse, they weren't trying to topple Blight or Spirit. They were trying to make a quintessential DBD killer. A killer that has all the tools, which in a sense, you know, kind of fits the lore of the Xenomorph, because the Xenomorph is supposed to be the perfect predator, like the perfect organism. That, that's something they say a lot in the movies, is that like it's the apex of evolution and all this stuff, and it's just completely, it adapts to every situation it's in. So. It makes sense that when it gets into the trials, it has all the tools to succeed in the trials uh, fairly, uh, fairly, uh, you know, efficiently, <laughs> you know? So I, I think it's cool that they designed it that way. Obviously, as somebody who's going to be maining the character, that makes me very excited and happy, especially considering the fact that, like, I like demo and I play a lot of Nemesis as well. So the aspects of its kit are things that I'm familiar with. So I don't know. I just think they did a good job with uh, laying out uh, this character and giving them all the tools that they need. 
Uh, but what do you think? Do you think the Xenomorph is a perfectly created killer? Or do you think there's some things that they could have done better uh, to make the killer make a little bit more sense? Let me know down in the comments below because that's going to be it for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for watching today. But I do upload daily tomorrow. I'm going to be talking to you about my first day impressions of the chapter itself and giving you all of that. So, yeah, I'll see you there tomorrow. But if I do not, I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye.